but I actually went ahead and did a lot of work on the um, lower half of the chassis and all that stuff. So I uh, had to airbrush some more parts I forgot to do. Uh, I glued on the front bumper and what I'm going to do is this is supposed to be uh, chrome silver and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mask it off kind of right behind here and then just airbrush all that and same thing with the back um, but it looks pretty good I put in the chairs I gave them a brown panel line wash just for all the lines in there and it's very subtle but you do notice it compared to you know what it used to be um, the car is supposed to turn like this axle here is supposed to rotate yeah right uh, once the paint is on there it's like it's kind of giving you the finger it's like I'm not moving for nobody um, but looks pretty good um, painted up the wheels too nice blue chrome hubcap tires are painted to rubber so and they have poly caps inside so this is kind of where I'm confused because it's like this is supposed to be um, like an axle rods in here but it's like the poly caps turn on their own because I didn't glue the poly caps down so this is the axle rod for the back let's see how these fit on here and I actually showed this off to my dad because again I'm building this for him Gave me the most disheartening news ever. Okay, so that fits. Ah, look at that. Sweet. Um, he said uh, it's too fancy for his diorama of nothing but tanks. I was like, yeah, but it goes in the background. He's like, too fancy. <laughs> okay, I'll put some rust on it or something. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so the back ones kind of move. I don't really care, actually. I don't. They don't need to move at all. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue all this stuff down. Yeah. Eh. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so let's just see. Let's just see how this all looks. So there's the front fenders. And I'm going to mask off the blue here in a little while so I can paint the black on. So this will fit. Not like that. Oh. It's not a nice fit, but uh, yeah, that'll look really good. So like I said, uh, what I'm going to go do now is paint or tape up the car. It's time to do it. Uh, I'm going to paint this black here. And... Yeah, what else did I do? Oh, yeah. I did these parts here. I forgot to show these off. Here's the uh, dashboard. It's just painted buff. I painted a bunch of the buttons silver. Added the decal on there. And there's just a little bit of a panel line wash here on the glove compartment. Looks pretty good. Uh, it's just something small that you'll you will see on the inside, but uh, it's not really to stand out. And then here the exhaust and muffler will fit on here, but I'll put these on later after the bumpers painted. But that's what it'll look like. And uh, Tammy even drilled out the hole, like they molded that out pretty nice nice little touch so yeah that's about it for me now and um, I really really love this metallic silver from testers it's like a chrome it's super shiny it's not as reflective but I think if it had a gloss coat on it it would look very good you know it would it, it would do a, a good imitation of, of a chrome or at least a high polished metal uh, which I really like, so I'm pretty excited about that. 
because I really like how these hubcaps look here. And I just hand painted them on. I was going to airbrush them, but it, it was going to be kind of hard to airbrush them because this is kind of uh, cone shaped. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. It's looking looking really good. I'm having quite a bit of fun with this, with this little guy. And I'm going up to Calgary again on Monday. And I'm hopefully... It depends, because I'm actually doing a job up there. Whoops. Don't do that. Hopefully I'll be able to pick up some more supplies, especially tape. My hobby store hasn't had Tamiya tape in for a while. So, anyways, I'm going to go and uh, paint all this stuff up. So one of the problems I had last time was how to get the tape <clears throat> around the nice curves like this. So I found a nice, easy way how to do it. It's a bit tedious, but it does work. I'm going to take some 6mm tape. That's the thinnest stuff that they have from Tamiya. And I'm going to pull just a length about that long. Stretch it out. Again, I like to use a sheet of glass because it, uh, it's nice to cut on. You, you know, when you're cutting on your mat, your knife, 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 knife sinks in. I watch Sharps rifles today my brother and I we were having an accent contest anyways um, your knife will sink in here and what it does is, is when you're cutting like you're cutting anything on on your cutting mat number one you're probably gonna get a lot of dirt on it because this stuff picks up a lot of little particles and stuff the other thing too is when you press down on it it bends it in like this so you're not getting a nice straight edge and plus the glass helps keep the tack of the tape so anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it like this, and these are just a few centimeters apart. Just these nice little squares here. And I don't need to worry too much about them being straight, because this is the straight edge that I want, that the tape already has. So, you just keep going. Almost done here. So, let's just lift a bit of it up. So what you do is you just take your tape. And you can see kind of like I've already done here. And you just put it down kind of as flat to the edge as you can. And this is going to be a little bit trickier to do because I'm working on a curve here. Anyways, I'm just going to put that down there. down on it so you're kind of putting it on every other section and then all you have to do to fill it in is you just go back and put another piece of tape in between like that so this one here whoop, I gotta work really slow so I don't accidentally puncture the paint which I'm pretty sure I've done on that one. So that'll fill in like that. So there's this little nice little gap right there. Just pick up a piece of tape, line them up. And there you go. So I'm getting this nice curve on there. It'll take me a while longer to do it, but uh, I'll have a nice edge. And then I can go ahead when I'm done and take some thicker tape. And what I'm going to do basically is just... I'm going to just put a, a layer of tape around this. And then I'm going to go and take um, some nice paper, scrap paper, plastic bag, who knows what. And tape a bag around the rest of the body. That way I don't risk getting it anywhere else and I don't have to uh, use up whatever's left I don't have to use up a lot of uh, tape uh, on the rest of the car alright everybody here's the taped up version and uh, went pretty well quite happy with that again it's just little piece by piece and it did it so what I have to do for this I have to paint inside of the wheel wells here they can just be black you're not gonna 
you're not going to notice them that much, but you are going to notice it if there's a bit of tan and blue in there. And I, I think I have to paint, ah, tear that down there. So yeah, then this will be painted black, but this will be part of the bottom of the car. And then there's the sides of the walls in here. So it's going to take me a while to paint all this, I think. But um, I've also got the front fenders here. And uh, this is as much as I could clean them. So I'll go ahead and paint these. And uh, I'll go and get my airbrush ready. And uh, we're off. painted on Future two days ago and I think it turned out pretty well it seems to be a nice seal and the gloss looks pretty good on the fenders here and on the back looks pretty nice we just gotta show you guys this really quick here I got this in the mail today I'm pretty excited it's a pair of replica RAF flight goggles and they're pretty sweet not that expensive, this was under 10 bucks. And, uh, yeah, I guess I'll wear these when I airbrush. <laughs> but, uh, these are pretty cool. They finally got here today. It took over a month for them to get here. But I'm pretty excited. Uh, anyways. The other thing, too, um, I did, I bought this gloss varnish yesterday from Tamiya. And I tested it on this piece of styrene here that I airbrushed gloss red this is when I tested the lacquer thinner uh, mixing it with the acrylic paint and uh, it's supposed to repel fingerprints and stuff like that and it really does it's it's uh, much deeper and it before it was just glossy but now I can actually like see reflections in it and like here like there's my fingerprint it's gone it's really good stuff so I'm really excited about this but the, the only problem with it is, is it's not actually not even a problem it's something I have to keep remembering because I want to like I want to apply it on this and be like yeah here we go um, it has to be done last like this is the the very very last thing you will ever do with your model is apply this on there so I can't do anything with it till I'm done which makes sense but I just gotta be patient so I'm going to remove the tape and see how it uh, how it turned out here I'm pretty excited and a little nervous at the same time so but I think it'll be just fine and no tape residue like before oh yeah there's tape residue blast that will go away in a little while though it will it did last time oh man look at that perfect if not I'll just buff some Novus on it 
Ah, actually, that's really bad. Mm. Oh, shoot, it bled through a little. It bled through even though I was expecting it to do that in a couple areas. That'll be simple touch-ups. Come on. Can't get this off. There we go. Ugh, that looks horrible. Absolutely horrible. Heck, I'm gonna go and, even though it looks like crap, I'm gonna go airbrush all the rest of the parts that I need to. Next part is the chrome. One last one. There we go. So it actually looks really good. Like the, the line, getting it around the curve, looks perfect. Really happy with that. Again, I'm not happy with the taper as I do though. But um, I can fix that. I, I think. <laughs> Fingers crossed. That looks so awful. But uh, maybe just some... Leave it alone to dry a little while longer. I really thought the future would provide a thick enough layer to avoid all that. So I'm really shocked that it, it didn't. And I thought the lacquer would make it tougher. And it's not. It's really it's really bumming me out. But uh, it's not a loss. So yeah, I've got to paint some some silver on here, and I'm going to use um, metallic silver testers paint. And basically, I'm going to hand paint most of it, like the the door handles here. That I'm just going to hand paint those, and like a couple of these little areas here. But this line here is going to be chrome, so I'm going to airbrush that and. Actually, I think that's it for the for the car body. That is, I'm also gonna do the um, airbrush the fenders and the bumper and the front grill here. So that's my next step. Not impressed that this happened, but um, yeah, I've got a feeling I just gotta leave it alone and it will resettle itself again. I can kind of see some other areas here. Darn, 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 darn. Oh well. It'll at least, it'll look good. I'll get it. I'll get it there. If, if push comes to shove, I'm just going to buy some gloss lacquer and be like, take this, sucker. But uh, look at that. It looks great. Anyways, I'm going to go, guys, and contemplate what to do next. Just doing a quick update after painting. There's the stripe on the top. Looks really good. I'm quite happy with that. A little buffing out there. It's got a little bit of an edge, but that's easy. Um, unfortunately, another problem occurred. Um, it sparkled silver everywhere. And I was taking extra care for that not to happen. But it looks like I thinned the plastic, uh, the paint rather, down too much, so it happened. But um, 
All I'm going to do is take some mineral spirits on a cotton swab and just go over it really lightly. It should just come right off because this is acrylic underneath. Um, yeah, then I'm going to I'm going to buff this out with some uh, Novus 2. I should get rid of that paint peel. But uh, silver looks really good. Uh, let me just show you here real quick. So here, look at that. It just looks great. When this has a gloss coat, it'll look really chrome-like, I think. So, you know, like, check that out. Looks sweet. Um, and I also cut off the bumpers because masking them would just be a lot of work, and it's just a little bit easier if I just cut them off, repaint these parts black, and glue them back on. So that's what I decided to do. And uh, yeah, I masked off all the um, clear parts too, and I think I think they will have turned out pretty well. Let's just <laughs> carefully remove the tape without removing them from the sprue. Come on. There we go. So, this metallic silver, I think I mentioned, if I didn't, I'll do it now. I like it a lot because it's, you know, I'm not ready for alclad metals and stuff like that. don't really like using lacquer in the airbrush, but uh, this, this silver is really nice stuff. And yeah, once this gets a a nice gloss coat on it, I mean, look at that. That's going to look really great in the car once I uh, install these pieces here. So I'm quite happy with this. And, uh, oh. Can't wait. So... Like I said, I'm going to go buff out the Novus, uh, or buff out the car with Novus. Then I'm going to wash the Novus off. I didn't do that too well last time. I thought I had it pretty clean, but I didn't. And I'd like to add a gloss coat on it again. It's kind of a sealer. Look at that. Oh, beautiful chromed edges. Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, I'm going to use this from now on. It's just, this is just a great paint. It's kind of weird though, Testers has this, you know, they write Testers on the top, and then they have all this warning label, they have enamel here, they have more warnings here, more warnings here, then they have the barcode, and then really little letters that tells you what the color is. It's just kind of funny how they do that. Um, so yeah, that's basically my plan. I'm just going to clean off the silver buff out the tape residue I have some little touch-ups to do and that's about it so I'll see you guys later so uh, you might be thinking right now oops this is uh, part three again um, I have stripped the paint off of the car again uh, I don't know really what happened I have one theory as to what happened once the tape went on there, it, um, I don't know what, what the heck, it, this thing has a problem with tape. I don't get it. it. Maybe there's, you know, maybe it's the moisture of the stickiness, uh, being trapped in there, trying to dry. I, I really don't know. And yeah, it drives me crazy. So I decided to just strip it off and I, I kept thinking all last night what was I doing what was I doing wrong and I kept replaying the process in my head over and over again and I kept coming up to the same conclusion okay so I had the model here I thinned it down lacquer thinner that should accelerate the paint that's supposed to provide a harder bond for the uh, or a harder surface that should have worked why isn't it working? And then I looked at the tire or the cabs here, and I went, "Okay, that for that part it worked." And you know, I have this little 
piece of plastic here. Remember, I did this test a while ago. Okay, it should have worked on here. It worked on here. Why didn't it work on here? So what I did is I painted it on, I painted it on, I painted it on, I painted it on, and then it kind of hit me. I think what I did wrong is I added on way too many layers of paint. So all these layers that I kept adding hadn't dried thoroughly yet. And so that's that's my best guess as to the only thing I can really figure out. Because like I said before, I've been watching as many videos about how to paint cars and stuff as I can. And there was one guy I was watching actually yesterday. He was building a formula car. And he just put like this two quick layers of red on. And it was perfect. And I went, what? How the heck did he do that? And I can't do that. He just did it in two layers. And I went, oh, that's got to be it. I'm... I'm kind of certain that uh, that's what's going on here. So it pained me to do this again for the second time. So what I'm going to do next is take the car and I'm going to prime it. Actually, I'm going to glue this. That's going to break. That'll suck. So I'm going to go and prime the car. I have some white surface primer it'll do really well. Uh, I'm actually, the first thing we can do is take some 1500 grit sandpaper. Where did I put that? Here. Yeah. I'm just going to polish up the body because I can see some scratches and stuff and I just want to work all those out. This 1500 grit is really nice stuff. You really don't see anything uh, in the way of residue. And the next thing I'm going to do is, and I, I learned this only too late, um, is to rescribe all the panel lines deeper. And so I'm going to take some time and do that. All the panel lines are going to be nicely rescribed. Plus, there's, you know, quite a bit of paint in there that I, I kind of couldn't get out. I'm going to try it again. I am so depressed and so beaten by this simple thing and you know I'm trying and failing and I'm trying and failing and I'm so certain <laughs> this time I maybe might have got it and if this doesn't work I am going to cave in and buy some lacquer paints and do it that way but I want to get this right. That's the worst part. I, I really want it to be a nice looking car. And I, because I want to do this in the future, I have a bunch of other car models. I have actually two. Do I? Yeah, I have two car models in storage. I have a motorbike in the storage. And I have a list of a whole bunch of others that I would really like to build. But the thing that keeps me away from it is the car body. So I'm learning how to do it. It is frustrating. Yes, but I will get there. I know it. So, like I said, I'm going to go and rescribe all the parts and sand it down and prime it tonight. Alright, everybody, here's the finished primed car. It looks pretty nice, all white. And I'm just going along with this fine sanding stick here and I'm just picking out any little blemishes little flex, whatever else I can find. There was one here on the hood and I got rid of that one. I think I see one more right there. I might be able to get it. Oh, no. Just some dust. So yeah, I'm just going through and this is dried nice and tough and feels good. It looks good. And I'm quite happy with this. So this is Tamiya Fine Primer White and Tamiya makes several different primers and this is gray here this is a fine grit as well though and uh, when you're looking for primers um, I bought this stuff from my brother because I happened to be there that day and it usually sells pretty quick so I bought him a, a bottle of primer because this stuff is really tough it's really really well worth the money it, it's expensive but it's really worth it um, and I, I accidentally bought this fine grit once, and I, I gave it to him because he paints mostly 
Warhammer figures and all that sort of stuff, 35th scale kind of thing. And uh, I told him how to use it, and you just have to spray it on in lighter layers, and um, every detail you can perfectly see, like all the uh, the lines here in the paneling and stuff like that. Absolutely perfect. You can see it all. It looks good. So I'm quite happy with that. So like I said, I'm going to go and um, just finish sanding just a few of these little areas, little bumps and whatnot. And uh, it's quite nice and smooth, so I'm happy about that. And I'm going to get ready to paint the blue, Royal Blue X3. So I'm getting excited. Alright everybody, I was going to do this on... Monday, I got tired, I was going to do it yesterday, I didn't have time, it is Wednesday, and I'm masking the black fender, and it's quite dry, um, quite happy with that, and uh, added a nice coat of future on there, it seems to be doing really, really well, so I'm going to paint this, and the nice blue, and once the blue is kind of dry enough to handle, I'm going to take off the tape so I don't have that sticky residue anymore, even though I don't think it'll happen with the black. Um, and, and because I added a nice, you know, softer layer. It was just about three quick coats. Um, the other thing too is, I mentioned in that video, I mentioned a video a while back that there was a fellow who had a very excellent tutorial on wet sanding, and he did a very, very good job of it. And one of the things he had in there were these polishing cloths, and they were a very, very cool type of sandpaper. And uh, I was going to buy them, and I looked up, I looked them up online. I know the company, Micromark. Uh, they make tons of, like, oddity products and things that you don't really need, and a lot of them are just, you know, kind of specialized tools and, like, you know, more sensitive tweezers and things like that. And uh, they sell those on there so I thought oh heck I'll just buy them on there so when I was in this, in uh, Calgary looking at this stuff um, this Tamiya gloss they had a bag of this polishing sandpaper and I decided not to get it so um, went online to their store and they are very expensive pieces they're about five dollars almost five dollars each and then you can buy them in a kit. And so I found this Revel one. I thought, heck, I'll look up the Revel one and see what the Revel is. And the Revel one is the Micromark. They've just repackaged it. So my dad was up in Calgary yesterday. I wasn't. He had business up there. And I said, I uh, think you could stop in the store there and get me this stuff. And so he did. So I'm just going to show you the kit here. Um, I actually paid less on the kit than I would have online, which is really nice. Um, so you get all these sa um, sandpapers here, and um, you get six sheets of different grits, and they're kind of this fabric-like plastic, and they're very nice. So this is a 3200 grit. I have to be careful because these stink like none other. Uh, oh, yeah, got a good whiff of it there. 3600. And here's 4,000. <sighs> Seriously. 6,000. 8,000. Can't even feel it. And then 12,000. It feels like a piece of leather. So anyways, you use these in a process of sanding. And uh, you get this high polished gloss surface. So, I picked these up because I plan on doing more cars. I'm having actually an enjoyable time with this one when I get this one down properly, the Citroen here. When I get this one down, I'd like to build more. I have another car and a, and a motorbike in the shelf uh, I'd really like to build. Oh, and I actually have two. I have the Mustang as well. Um, so what else you get? Uh, in the kit here, you get this sanding block. It's this foam block, and you basically wrap the paper around it like so. I don't think I'm going to use this, but you never know what you're going to need it for. Some flannel cotton for polishing. And a polishing compound. I'm not going to use this stuff. I'm going to stick with the um, Tamiya here. I quite like this. I tried it out, I think I mentioned. And it, it's quite nice. But yeah, it even says here on the package, Micromesh. 
If it hadn't been so dense, I probably would have seen that. Um, but yeah, there's nice instructions in here, and it's just uh, glad to have it, because like I said, I paid less for it uh, than I would have online. So anyways, I'm going to go and keep taping up the car here, and then I'm going to airbrush the blue. That's the X3 Royal Blue. Thin layers, and then leave it alone. I'll actually take off that tape. Then leave it alone, and uh, I should be good to go. I'm pretty excited. I'm 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 feeling uh, much more confident this time around. Third time's the charm. I hope. <laughs> I really really hope. Because uh, like I said, I, I want to keep building cars. I'm actually having fun. There's lots of cars that I'd like to to add into a collection one day. And, uh, yeah, but so far, so far so good, and I'm, I'm really, really glad that I found the, found these pads, that was, that was really fortunate. So, yeah, I guess the next thing, unless I run into a problem, is airbrushing. Alright guys, um, so I just painted the thing, I figured you guys would be sick and tired of me watching me paint this silly thing. So I didn't record it, and I screwed up on my own incompetence. I held it too far away, and I made a nice orange peel effect, and it was completely my own fault. I'm still kicking myself, going, how could you do something that stupid? Um, which I keep saying as I build my models, so it shouldn't surprise me that I do something so stupid. So anyways, it made a really lovely orange peel effect. It was really, really good time compared to my previous orange peel effect this was really really orange peeling so I decided to test these um, micro mark cloths uh, sanding papers actually and um, they work really well these things are amazing guys Wow uh, I did lose my um, polish but I can get that back quite easily because I still have the paint um, and so what I'm going to do, what I did is on the back here, it like cracked everywhere. It was just all these lines everywhere. And you can still kind of see them, but I, I mostly got rid of them all. So what I'm going to do in just a little while here is there's one spot right there i got to get rid of. It's this big glob. I think I'm actually going to kind of cut it off here. It's just ugly. There we go. So I'm just going to polish. I'm just going to take the car out. I'm just going to polish it down a little bit more with some of them. Um, and I'm going to respray paint it blue once more. And do it properly this time. Because like I said, I had it way too far back. And it was the thing where I, when I was looking at it, I went, oh, geez. I should have seen this coming. So, yeah, I'm going to uh, lacquer it down again. The paint, spray the blue. It'll be perfect and flawless and shiny. And then I'm going to take it tonight and coat it with Future, and it'll be uh, absolutely spotless. And then I'm going to leave it alone. I'm not going to touch it for a while. Um, but, uh, yeah, these, these polishing pads are really, really great, except next time... Whoops. Don't want to lose that. That's important. Next time I do this, it's going to be over a sink, because <laughs> this whole thing was just, like, wet everywhere, and I'm like, ah, oh, great. So, works, but, um, yeah, it, I just can't believe I did something that stupid. But, like, check this out, you put a little bit of water on it, so I could put, like, a, I could even just put a gloss coat on it. And it's like, I need a bit more water here. Look at that, it's, like, perfectly shiny again. Absolutely flawless. Like, there were bumps on here. And I went through and did the top, like I went through each of the, the layers. And when I got to the 12, actually when I got to about, I think maybe 4,000 or 8, yeah. I think it was 4,000 grit. It was just perfectly flat. It looks great. So, it's a learning process, but I got it down now. These Now that I have these polishing cloths, I'm kind of more confident and like I said, I did something really stupid there, so I'm gonna go and wipe it down. I gotta. This has got to be cleaned. There's some fibers on it still, 
but uh, that that's easy to clean up but uh, yeah I'm getting there I'm so excited I'm so excited because I want to build another car I have a I have a car model another one and I really really want to build it on top of all the other models that I have to finish first so <laughs> I'll get there